live stream will work. You're in like the maternity ward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Killing all the bitches. Where all them bitches go? Showing us. Oh, cool. I'll give you my channel here real quick. Um. Uh, where do I view it at? OnlyFans? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you gotta pay though. Pay to play. Just uh, get those custom feet pics. Nah, your your pics are up on the internet. Why would I pay for it? <laughs> There's probably I've thought about this because I've always like thought about running for like a local office here like <clears throat> the local state oh house God. or whatever and i'm like there's probably videos of me saying some pretty shady shit <laughs> that'll, that'll yeah, there's no way. immediately oh yeah <clears throat> well, he, I, that was funny i was actually thinking about something similar to that think about all the people who was like <clears throat> that grew up with all the social media ever like us like when we're like 40 or something and people our age are trying to run for office like you know how much easier it's going to be to like like, think about we had all the stuff when, like, uh, Trump and Biden and all them were, like, younger, low 20s, and there were people with video cameras everywhere. Yeah. And, like, oh, he was just pulled his video out from 40 years ago, and he was freaking, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and now you can just, it's right in your fingertips. So, like, nowadays, uh, <clears throat> so in the future, I was, I was thinking about it, uh, all the only people who can actually win are people who are, like, bred from birth to be like politicians like don't do anything that and the yeah, whole people exactly. around them scrubbing everything it's like yeah where they, <clears> they control <throat> all their social media and shit yeah yeah and it's gonna get worse because those are gonna be the most bought people in the world mm -hmm. yeah. well we protected you from this so you owe us yeah. you know <clears throat> i would i would never go i have already everyone has already done something that will, that can absolutely bury them Oh yeah, ninety percent of people. I mean, you'd have to be so clean. I'm gonna be running for office, and I'm just gonna be a video out there with Cardenas. Is gonna be like, uh, my name's Marcus Cardenas, and uh, I knew McDaniel from uh, 07 to to 2012, and I saw him. It's gonna be like blurred out, like the dark shadow of the deep voice. I don't know, I saw him. I saw him stick a Twix bar up a guy's ass while he was sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That guy was me. I was that guy. He's not going to know who this is, right? Well, now he does. My face is blurred out, but <laughs> he knows exactly who you are anyway. <laughs> Have you guys uh, been keeping up on the alien stuff at all lately? <clears throat> no, I haven't been watching too much Joe Rogan. That's where I get all my alien facts. <laughs> he, he had that guy, uh, I started listening to it, that guy, Travis Walton. Remember that scary-ass movie, Fire in the Sky, where, like, the aliens experiment him on, on him and shit? He's on the table, and they, like, think shove so. a needle into his eye, and they're like... That sounds awful, but no, I have not seen that. Yeah, it's, uh, here. What do you say the aliens look like? I think he said they looked like the little gray people, but then he like uh, <clears throat> classic. He tried to fight them, and he ran out of the like operating room, <laughs> and then he went down a hallway, and these like Norwegian like eight foot tall, beautiful blonde people came and like talked to him telepathically and told him to like take care of the future or something like that. <coughs> Norwegian, oh, okay. So it's just a bunch of white people. Yeah, a bunch of white blonde. Makes sense. Just like Jesus. Yeah. Blonde haired, blue eyed Jesus. <laughs> blonde haired, blue eyed aliens. Yeah. You know? Jesus. Yeah. But I haven't really. They just can't get enough of this. No. You guys saw, like, the uh, the FLIR videos, right? From the Navy? I don't think so. Uh, maybe. Um, was it, yeah, the. <clears throat> didn't you already have that guy on there talking about it? Like he was like an ad fleet admiral or something. Yeah, he was like. And uh, yeah. they were doing like testing or practice out there, training. And then all of a sudden, like, yeah, it just came down right above the water, and then blink of eye, boop, gone. Yeah. And, like they had it on camera and all that. Yeah, he. Uh, I think he had like a camera on 
on his helmet or something he never turned on, he said. But there's three videos, like, of Fleer following these unidentified crafts, and so... Oh, yeah, and he was actually... Uh, yeah, he was saying that it was on the radar, and uh, it, like, blinked off the radar, like, super fast, like, faster than anything could possibly leave the radar zone. Yeah, and they were... Whatever the craft it was, they were... Just... Oh. Yeah, that's cool. Whatever happened to all those people storming Area 51? I feel like that shit just disappeared. <laughs> they, uh, there was like a million fucking groups talking about doing it, and then just one day it was gone. <laughs> yeah. They just, we'll see what happened. They actually postponed it, and it's the half, more than half the people fell out. They're like, yeah, I guess we can just, I guess, I guess we can just attack the capital then, I guess. That's basically <laughs> what happened. <laughs> Next best thing, I guess. Oh, they were nuns. Oh, they were like seven years old. Yeah, they were. They're like the anti-nuclear weapon people that live here in Washington. I, I remember. Oh, I, yeah. say, I actually want to get them on this podcast and like that would be talk cool. to them as like people who work there. Well, that was like ten years ago. They probably. De- oh, you're talking about the people who work there? Well, those people specifically uh, are dead for sure. Yeah, but they're they, I'm sure there's they, others. So. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it's like a specific <clears throat> cult or something. But, uh, they're part of a church. So like, they're like super hippies. They're yeah. Like the remnants from the sixties. Well, I remember when I first got there, people told me about that, and then whoever told me, I came to the was, they're like, "Yeah, thank God, and the Marines shot him because that'd be a huge mess." <laughs> <laughs> Marine would probably, would probably go to jail over that. All right, because all the Marines there are just like this ready. As soon as something happens, they're freaking guns blazing. That'd be a bad story. No. Nope. No, I remember the guy who shot it like through the floorboards of the van or whatever. <laughs> who was the guy? In the, he was in the tower, and it's when they were letting us carry the M9s instead of the M4s. <laughs> <laughs> and he was playing the tower. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> and he they said he was trying to do the fucking bullet catch. <laughs> and he fired it off? Yeah, you like, don't remember that dude? He shot through the fucking gun port. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, he, in the tower, he shot the the fucking conduit from like where you flipped. The oh yeah, yeah. He shot that conduit and it like bounced around in the fucking tower. He's like, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not remember that dude? He's probably shitting his pants <laughs> the entire yeah. time. <laughs> tower three one, give status. He, he, <laughs> Somebody go uh, there and check on him. Oh, not Keen? Keen? Not Keen. He was the new one before I got out. It was the one who oh. wore him. That <laughs> I don't know. Name, that douchebag. I can't remember his name, but... He, <laughs> he, was he a douchebag? Yeah. He was yes. Douche. He, like, he kicked so many people out for, like, first time. <laughs> and they were all in Navy. Yeah. And he refused to kick out any of the Marines. <laughs> the <laughs> Marines were like, okay, okay. You guys just need to really think about what you guys were doing. They'd That's give, wrong. Give but you, Marines, Navy guy, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> they'd give the Marines restriction and, like, half pay or whatever. But the yeah. guy's like, that was that guy's first offense. He didn't have DUIs or anything. He just shot Do you remember when he just, and he just shit all I mean, over him? that's a pretty big deal. What's that? Well, he shit all over him in front of everyone, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, he's like, had... I remember he was talking about his family and stuff. Like, this is probably why your son's going to be a piece of shit like you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, dude. I was looking around like, did he just say that shit? Like, <laughs> people are laughing. Oh, dude, I can never stop laughing. That shit was hilarious. Well, I didn't go to the, his actual captain's mass. I remember we had to go to like, uh, and so for anyone, there's there should be some people watching. I pinned my admins, but captain's mass is basically just where you go, and it's like a kangaroo court, and they just the commanding officer <laughs> basically hands down punishment regardless of any evidence or whatever. Yeah, so just talk, talk talking about your life. We had to go to his first one, and then they canceled it. But like every single one who was off duty had to be in that ort building. So. Uh, I actually, I was there for that. I remember that. They were just they shitting all over. Water? <laughs> What's that? No. They saw him with his phone, and he tried to throw it in the water. <laughs> really? So they lost his phone. Yeah, so they already saw him. So they were just like, "You, we already knew <laughs> that you had the phone. Like, what the, You just lost your phone now. Like, <laughs> hundreds of dollars. That was the same kid? 
No, it's a different guy, but it was the same day. Because there's like three that day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. That's pretty bad. I'm pretty surprised that none of us ever went to Captain's Mass. There are many times when I should have gone to Captain's We probably could have. A lot of times. We're not as dumb as those people. Me, me and Billy Hoots, uh, when we were roommates, I was, I couldn't stay in post for like a month because of my back. I was going to chiropractor. And the entire time, everyone was saying that I'm faking. I was like, dude, I've been here for two and a half years. Like, <laughs> this is the first time I haven't been. No, I wasn't, dude. I was freaking, I was hurting. Um, so anyways, uh, I was with Billy Hoots. Who I'm actually, he's getting married. I'm going to his wedding in August. What? Uh, FYI, yeah. Why didn't he invite me? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Mm. I know why he didn't invite me, so. Okay. <laughs> I think he hates you. He met me twice and hated me yeah. both times. <laughs> <laughs> well, Billy Hoots didn't, didn't really, like, really like anyone, so. Um. <clears throat> yeah, he's getting married in August. I'm going to be uh, one of the um, groomsmen. Cool. So that's cool. It's good to know he's still alive. I'm surprised. Yeah. No good. <clears throat> but anyways, um, yeah, we were driving the van, taking people back and forth to one nine, and uh, we left so many times to go to that really good Mexican restaurant that was right outside the base, like about five minute drive outside the base, and uh, <clears throat> we were like, oh, we haven't got any calls, let's go get something to eat, so we just drive the van. Um, we would park it and we'd get in my truck and then drive there, go get burritos, and then come back in the van. California times. burritos. Oh yeah, dude. Several times against Juanitos. Juanitos was 1,000 times better than that place. What place are you talking about, McDaniel? Uh, yeah, I can't remember. It's a taqueria place that's yeah. by... Uh, in Silverdale. It's in Silverdale. Yeah. yeah, they had like the burrito with the french fries inside of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. California burrito. Yeah, that place was amazing. That place is good. Oh. I'm just saying Juanitos was so fucking delicious. Do you, do you guys remember when I was... Uh, it was um, New... I don't know if we were all together during the time, but it was New Year's. And I came to the base, and I got pulled over by the uh, gate people. And then the base police came up, because they said I was like, they smell alcohol in my breath. It was on the uh, New Year's Day at like 4 a.m. Really? And then everyone was passing. I remember Hogan came on the base, and he, he like, I saw him look at me. He was like, oh, uh, no. <laughs> so I was pulled over off the side, and they were like breathalyzing me. But <clears throat> and then, uh, wasn't it? Was it MA2 Bell? You remember him? Cardinals? Bell? I do. So he left section, he left the uh, doing security, and then he went to the base place, and he was there, and he remembered me, he's like, you go on the post? I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, get out of here. I was like, oh, sweet. So they, I remember like, you telling me that. They didn't breathalyze yeah. or anything? And he was going to, but then he knew I probably would have not passed it, and so he was like, all right, just go. So it's completely screwed over everyone. Yeah, those gate guards are dumb. I remember I was with my old buddy from A school, and we were both like 20. And there's this chick who worked at the next, and she lived off base, so we went and like drink at her house for a while. Not that, <laughs> it was kind of lame, so I'm like, let's just get a cab back. I mean, we were like drinking, but we weren't like fucked up. And so we got in like one of those pen cabs, and there was another guy going to base in there that we didn't even know, and he was fucked up, like nearly puking, like couldn't even fucking look straight. He was like all hunched over and shit. And so of course we get through the gate, and they pull all of us out. And uh, <clears throat> I forget exactly what the gate guard said. They're like, we're not going to call base police, though, because you guys are doing the right thing and getting a cab, even though you're <laughs> underage. And I told the guy, I'm like, I don't even know who that is. He's like, oh, really? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing, sharing a cab with him. He's like, right, yeah. we'll call his command. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Hey. Jesus Christ. Did you guys hear what happened to those people who owned one of those in Bremerton? No. I can do that. I couldn't believe this. So I was going to go back there and eat because it was like my favorite place that was in that area. And it was closed. And I was like, why the fuck is it closed? I looked up on the news. They were murdered. Like a cartel murdered them. Dang. The mom, the dad, and two of the kids. You think they were like From Mexico? They think that was drug related. Yeah. Yeah, they were laundering. So they were like, they might have been like peddling drugs out of there or something. Yeah. But yeah, they were just like slaughtered. Dang. Fucking crazy, dude. I couldn't believe that. Isn't that crazy that the cartel will go all the way up to Washington? Nice. Yeah, it's fucking wild, that's, bro. That's commitment, dude. Yeah. 
think those guys are on salary. No. They get they get um, hazard pay from the cartel. I mean, I'm sure they get paid well. I can't yeah. imagine that. <laughs> uh, I got a couple hundred bucks here. I need you to just drive like yeah. 60 to 70 hours. You gotta murder these people. The family. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we uh, we we'll give you a gas card, but only up to a hundred dollars. And no funny business. Right back. <laughs> you I want receipts. This is this is a legal operation here. You fucking like ridiculous. Work, right? The corporate card. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. Dude, yeah. such a good show. I couldn't believe. Uh, I think it was the last season when they pulled up, and you're like, "Oh, they're about to get blasted or something," you know? Oh yeah, dude. I thought they were both fucking dead for sure. <laughs> And they just shot. He just fucking there. blast that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> I was shocked. I was around him. He's like, "All right, let's go inside, Familia." <laughs> yeah. It's a ballsy move. <laughs> I've never seen that show. Ozark, wow, it. it's pretty disappointing. I have a, I have an, I have an issue with Jason Bateman. Why? And what's that issue? Um, you think debatable. Uh, but also, but mostly it's go debatable. On. But mostly, uh, because he makes me, he just, he just makes me angry. I don't think he's a good actor. You're wrong. I mean, he, I mean, he literally does play the same character in everything he does. Every time. There's a lot of people who do that, though. But you know, Arnold does that. Stone Cold, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I love Keanu Reeves, but Keanu Reeves is a one-dimensional actor, for sure. Yeah. Uh, no. I disagree yeah, with that, too. He's a two-dimensional actor. He can do two. <laughs> he is okay. one and a half. That's better than one. Okay, Stone Cold actor than Jason Bateman. And that's a fact. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard someone say. It's not. No. He's been in a few movies, and I love Stone Cold. So he because be, be you comedy, said that, it's instantly a fact. Be <laughs> yes, it is. So, um, I do like that movie, Horrible Bosses, though, that he was in. Yeah, the second one sucks balls, but the first <laughs> one's right. Yeah. Yeah. That was a uh, pre- Pre uh, Kevin Spacey um, cancellation era. That makes me sad. Out of all of these, because I fucking what a fantastic actor. <laughs> yeah, I was just talking to April about Kevin Spacey. And How's April doing? She's good. Yeah, she's, she's not sick yet. Uh, she's like, no, she probably is for sure. But uh, um, you know what's funny? I still her um. The bacon wrapped stuffed jalapenos that she made, yeah. that party at her house that one time, I still make those, and it's like a hit at every party I go to. Yeah. People are like these are really good. I'm like, I know, I make them. Do you, you like cut them in <laughs> half, right? Or cut them yeah. in the middle and then stuff mm-hmm. them? Like, yeah. Yep, yeah, stuff them. They're bomb. Yeah, I perfected them. They're amazing. But yeah, I stole it from your wife. So. Yeah. <clears throat> well, she probably stole it from pictures or something. So. Yeah. Thief. I don't think it was like handed down generations. Oh. You, you, you don't think April's a fucking secret culinary fucking icon? Crabby <laughs> Patty formula or something. She, she has, has her own cookbook. She has like a bunch of old cards from her grandma that are pretty cool. I haven't told her this, but I'm gonna get like a, I'm gonna get them all like scanned and made into like a book because they're all getting pretty ragged. So. Well, she probably knows that now because she could probably hear you. She might be. I don't think she can hear me. She's down. <laughs> She doesn't watch this? No. You think April will watch this? <laughs> Fuck. How am I going to watch this? <laughs> that's, that's one thing I like about being married to April. Is we have like completely different interests other than like watching certain things. So it's she's not always like, oh, where are you? I want to be with you. Where are you at? When are you coming home from work? <laughs> like, there's none of that whatsoever. So that's pretty cool. Well, also, you guys have been married for a while, too. <laughs> so it's kind of a little level of, uh, alright, just fucking go do your thing. Leave me alone. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. I can watch Bridgerton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst fucking show ever made. Yeah, she likes she likes watching, like, the great Christmas light fight and shit like that. that sounds What's terrible. that? Like, I don't know what that is either. It sounds bad, though. It's like those shows on the Travel Channel. It's like the great Christmas light fight. They go to, like people's houses that like have these green <coughs> christmas displays and then they choose a winner at the end it's pretty dumb but some of them are pretty cool yeah i'd rather just do the display myself and watch somebody else's 
You know what was a really good show? It was that old MTV show, Next? You know, with the bus? That show's terrible. That is the, one of the best shows ever created. Worst fucking show ever made. <laughs> that, is not, that is one of the best shows. <laughs> I don't think I've ever watched it. How is that one of the best <clears throat> shows? So, no, I think, I think this is pre-The pre uh, Bachelor, right? This is pre-Bachelor era. Um, like, early 2000s. Because maybe, like, late 90s. And the 90s haircuts, like, from some 41, right? And the girls, they all look like the Paramore. Is that the, that one chick? Bailey Williams. Yeah, that haircut that she had. Yeah. <laughs> Every girl had that. And uh, so he was like, I'm looking for, it's all scripted. I'm looking for a guy who can put the fun and fun out. You know, just stuff like that. <laughs> and then there's a whole bus would come on, and there'd be, like, five guys in the bus. And so one guy, one by one, would come out, and then... The girl would see him walking up, and they would talk. And then, if she got sick of him, she'd go next. Or the you just <laughs> you don't seem like you like dogs as much as I do. So next, and then uh, and then he would leave, and then the next guy would come off the bus. But the best time, best uh, parts of the show would be when the guy he takes one foot off, and she yells out next because he's like ugly as shit. <laughs> and then you're like, oh dang, and then go back on the bus. It's funny because you make it sound like it's at all interesting, but it's actually just a fucking. It is. Show. It's the most disrespectful <laughs> show I've ever seen in my life. It's so mean. I, I don't know what type of guy would sign up for a show like that. Just to like, if you have any self confidence whatsoever, it's going to be completely shot. Yes. Yeah, so and everyone would sign up for that. I mean, <laughs> I wonder if we could. Uh, on, like, Facebook. Who's that? <laughs> yeah. I want that friend request, and that dude rules. Uh, <clears throat> what was that? Who's that one dude? He had the mustache, like the, the fucking. I know what a mustache looks like. You have yeah, one on your like face, that? but you put one. It was a one white Hitler mustache, but like a little bit longer. And uh, he'd always brag about how he'd always fire like two rounds out of one muzzle muzzle flash all the time. This dude was like, and he'd always just brag like, yeah, I did a couple couple uh, ops with the seals every now and then. Uh, yeah, they'd ask, they'd ask me to join in, but I was like, yeah, I'm too busy. Okay. He'd pull you into the office, and it'd be awkward because he was a first class, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, he pull us. He pulled me in one time, and he was showing me pictures on his Facebook from being in like Iraq or something. You know, <laughs> know this dude never left the wire in Iraq. Like, <laughs> he, he was like, he was in charge of the army. Yeah, but he'd show me. Yeah. Pictures I don't even know who you guys are talking about. I don't think I can't remember his name, but he was. Was, all right. Who was, uh... was that before I was there? Was he not there real long, or what? No, he was he was there in the middle. He was about in the middle. When I, no, he was there when you were there. Who, who, um, was, that? who was the guy who talked like he's from the Deep South? Oh, uh, Yabo? Barbo? By Barbo. Yeah, why Barbo? Why Barbo? Barbo. <laughs> the Spanish was originally what? I was trying I he's kick a, ass. Ridiculous shit, dude. I think it was awesome. Was you better cool. put a code on, Miguel. It's an Arctic blast out there. <laughs> yeah. That dude was so awesome. He 100% should have written me up, counseling chance. So many times. I came in, like, I stopped drinking up with my roommate at, like, 7, 7 a.m. And I was, like, hammered. I was sleeping for, like, 30 minutes, and they were, like, banging on my door because we were mustering right outside my barracks bedroom. Like, literally right outside the window. It was over in, um, uh, not the main base, the, the second base where all the housing was. You know what I'm talking about? Where I live yeah. next to you? Uh, no. I next no. To you for like years. Yeah, no, it wasn't on base. It was it was a smaller base that was kind of like oh, a mile away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot you moved to Keyport. Yeah. yeah. Keyport. And, uh... They're kind of mustering out there to do like a fun like PT, like play football or whatever. Or my window was open, actually. My window was open. They were like, they could see, they see me passed out on the bed just like that. <laughs> so I went to sleep like an hour prior or whatever. And then they finally were able to wake me up. And I, I was so drunk when I got up. And he was like, well, you're going to have to play with us, McDaniel. You're probably fucking hammered out of your mind, but you better get in there and play. Otherwise, you're fucking, <laughs> you're going to see Lieutenant Colonel. I was like, I remember oh, that, actually. Fuck. And I was trying to play, and I kept falling down. I couldn't even run in the straight line, like, dude. I'm pretty sure they sent Flutie there for, for you, did they? Well, yeah, everyone was mustering outside my bedroom window, and he was, like, banging on it. Daniel, wake up! <laughs> oh, fuck. Did, 
uh, Dude, what's, what's crazy though is my roommate drank as much as me, and he wanted to drive into base because he worked in Harbor. And I don't know how he got through base. He and I don't know how he did it, but he did. Didn't get in trouble. It was crazy. They're probably not looking for drunk drivers at seven in the morning as much as they are. Yeah, on a Tuesday. Especially when there's like a million people <laughs> coming through the gates, you can probably slip through. Yeah. <clears throat> There was a few times. I just, like, at 29 now, I get fucking super hungover. Like, if I don't eat and then drink and then eat again, I'll wake up fucking with a terrible hangover and I'll have to like, sleep for 12 hours. But there are, like, times where we'd fucking drink all night, sleep an hour, and then go out and do PT or something. And it really uh, yeah. a big deal. I remember we did that. I literally have went to Seattle, hadn't came back on work days. Like came back at two a.m. and then went to work, like right after, <laughs> for like fucking sixteen hours. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. I would never do that now. That'd I would never so do that now either. I'd fucking die. You fucking miserable. Um, I remember one time we all went there and Billy Hoots got arrested because uh, he was so drunk and he ran off, and um. Olo actually got lost, or he left, and he couldn't find anyone, so then he just crashed in a hotel room. And yeah, he invited this homeless guy with him. He's like, he because the homeless guy I was looking for a room, and he was like, yeah, you can stay with me. Yeah, yeah okay. he did. No, I remember Olo telling me that. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Why would you do that? He could have murdered you. He was like, yeah, well. And he made it sound like it was like at all normal. He's like, dude, he just didn't have nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't do that. Fucking ridiculous. <laughs> and then I remember all day was there. He was like, because we all got kicked out, and uh, was just, we all met down at the pier to take the boat back over the ferry. And he was there getting arrested. He was like yelling outside, like, oh, fuck you guys. That's not because he's being crazy and drunk. And then all day I looked at him, he's like, Madame, this is all your fault. Because it was like somebody's birthday, and I was like, hey, can I bring hoots? They're like, yeah, sure. He was, it was so funny. He's like, this is all your fault. Every time I told him, I was like, yeah, you were, like, yelling at me. He's like, I never did that. Hello fucking hated you. <laughs> did you really? No, I just, he didn't actually hate you. I just remember any time you said anything that he did not agree with, he would jump in your ass. Oh, uh, yeah. Because he'd yeah, always he be that. like, dude, I fucking said that girl last night. He'd be like, shut the fuck up, McDaniel, no one cares. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he yeah. Or, like, if you, or you told us. That... <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. Oh. I was saying, yeah, if you exaggerated your story at all, or were like, oh, yeah, I made out with that girl last night, he'd be like, shut the fuck up. No, you didn't. You were <laughs> I was with you the entire night. <laughs> Dude, he used to get into it with all day, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Because yeah. he hated all day, always telling his fucking stories, or every time he tried to do the Joker impression, he's like, we're fucking heard this a thousand times all day. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> there was one time... But uh, Olo was at All Day's house, and All Day had the two little kids, you know. And so they were downstairs, like, on the couch drinking, watching TV or whatever. <laughs> and one of the kids kept, like, screaming or something. And Olo would go, uh, 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 go come on. <laughs> to, like, a three-year-old screaming. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Olo, I fucking love Olo, but he's the most ridiculous human that I ever met. I remember he would drink, then he would throw up, <laughs> and within seconds he would start drinking again. Yeah. And just start drinking immediately afterwards. Yeah. I was in his barracks room with him one time, and we had this little handle of a, I don't know, it was Captain Morgan or something like that. And I was like, let's take shots, dude. And so we take like the first shot, and he's sitting on his bed, and he's like doing the face, like how he'd do like before he throws up. I'm like, you good, man? There was, like, a container in his room. I'm like, here, just throw up in this, dude. It's not a big deal. He's like, no, no, I'm good. And he, like, leans over on his bed to change the song on his iPad. And he goes, <laughs> it, was like, <laughs> throw up. it was just, like, a little pile. <laughs> and then he, like, dude, that's all he ever did. It was always just a like, little pile. He looks at me like that. <laughs> and I was like, why did you? He's like, oh, i got to do my sheets now. And he starts taking his sheets off. And we walk to the laundry room to wash his sheets. <laughs> Oh, I'm doing my sheets now. <laughs> Dude, I have so many stories, Volo. I remember one time 
there's this uh there's these marines standing outside of his barracks <laughs> and he's like dude come over here these guys won't shut the fuck up <laughs> so i go <laughs> over there and he comes out in his boxers <laughs> and no shirt on and just like starts talking to them and, ta- <laughs> and there was this marine <laughs> uh and he was he's one of these like american flag shorts it's like do i really like your shorts it's like you're so fucking cool bro i love you <laughs> <laughs> and then he just like leaves he grabs his guitar he doesn't say anything he walks down the stairs he walks to that like middle grass area with like those rocks and benches like, and he just fucking shatters his guitar against the fucking bench he did it right after like like nothing happened <laughs> and then he throws the pieces of the guitar on the ground and he's like dude do you want to go to fucking sherry's bro <laughs> <laughs> and there was uh... a <laughs> so- <laughs> someone like, complained like the sound or something before he left and like the watch came out, and uh, he was like looking around. And he sees like this guitar mess and shit, and he's like, "What the fuck is going on here?" And Ola's just like, "What the fuck does this piece of shit want?" <laughs> he's like, "I was like, shut up, dude. He can hear you." <laughs> like, <laughs> he was just like Sorry. trying to whisper, but being so loud that everyone could fucking hear him. <laughs> yeah. This is a bunch of random events. Sounds like a. Um... Dude, it was just like there's no sequence to it at all. Yeah. The whole night was just weird like that. We went to Sherry's, and then you know how he got he always gets fucking whipped cream on his pancakes? He asked the waitress. <laughs> he's like, can I get some whipped cream on these? And she was like, what? Do we want chocolate syrup too? He's like, oh yeah, that sounds good too. <laughs> and she was just kidding, but then she like walks away and he's like, fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't he like uh, in love with that one girl I was with, Arcadia? Well, the red hair. He liked her, I'm pretty sure, because he was mad every single time you said did anything to make that girl upset. <laughs> I never did anything to make her upset. I mean, you cool. did. She just doesn't know. <laughs> I remember the name. Which one was that? Oh, uh, yeah. It was one, one of the girls I brought to your apartment. Really? Um, we yeah, we met her. Really? Yeah, from the bar. She's um, like the nicest girl in the world. And you're yeah. like an asshole. Did you bang her in my apartment? Well, yeah. McD- How many girls did you bang in my apartment? <laughs> it's completely rude. We've talked about this so many times about his. Ha- McDan always be like, "Dude, I've had more sex in this fucking house than you have." <laughs> well, one of one of April's well, friends came to like visit because they were like going to the northwest or something, and it was April's friend and then her friend who we had never met, and so we're all hanging out. McDaniel came with us. I was like, "Oh, this girl's single, whatever. You could just come and hang out with us." And we went to dinner and shit, and then. I think we went to like uh, that cowboy bar or whatever, and you came back to my apartment with me and slept with her in the bedroom after knowing her for like three hours. <laughs> yeah, and then I left in the morning for everyone woke up. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> She's weird. She was. She was like know. really weird. She was weird. Who was um, that? but yeah, I think it was. I think it was three, three girls. Oh, the other girl, uh, Heather. This girl I used to date, the blonde one, the bigger one. The big one, yeah. Yeah, before you even had any furniture in there, it was like the second day you had the place. You like left us alone in the room after we were all hanging out in there yeah. to go talk to April. Yeah. yeah. Did a little nasty in there. Yeah, she was an interesting chick. Yeah, she was crazy. She's actually, uh, she's like been so, we actually got back in contact a little bit, uh, like a year ago. And she's been with this guy for like, Four years, and she cheated on him like five times. <laughs> and, uh, and he knows about it. And he, she, they're like, "Oh yeah, we fought, but you know, I think it's okay." And I was like, "He's still with you? Why? What is this? So funny." I don't understand how you, if you knew her for three hours, why on earth did you get back in contact with her? No, not her. This is Heather. Is, I got back in contact. My ex. Yeah, a girl from California came up to visit him. Mm-hmm. And we like hung out and then went back to my apartment. And that's the first time he begged in my apartment. Yeah. And in my guest room, that where there was like literally nothing. There wasn't even like blankets or anything. It was like, <laughs> like, no, it's carpet. It be the last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you went down the street from a uh, good old Winterberger. I did. He's married. Yeah, he he married now to a Hawaiian chick. Mm. Good for yeah. Him. Is he still fat? Yeah. Was she male order or something? <laughs> No, no, it's from Hawaii. There's one station in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Dude, this guy, he went from 
a banger, and then he went to Romania, then he went to Italy, then he went to uh, Hawaii. Um, then now they're back in Bremerton. So how do you get those three in a row like that? I don't know how he does it. That was a fucking Chad, dude. <laughs> a Chad? Well, you can put in requests to do back-to-back sea duties. You never get them, though. Obviously, he fucking did, or else he didn't. <laughs> he wouldn't have done it. It's true. So maybe they do get it. So what you said was wrong. I wasn't, maybe. Really, I wasn't really paying attention, but... Oh, yeah, never mind. Whatever. <laughs> what we did was considered sea duty, even though it wasn't. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. right. <clears throat> so. Such a slap in the face. Yeah. Well, a lot of people will don't want sea duty. Like, if you have a family, not everyone wants to go overseas. Yeah. So really, for some of them, they do it to try to help them out. Whereas uh, us, we wanted to go overseas because we're fucking single yeah. and still young. And then we ended up in Washington, Silverdale. Yay. Sick. Did Silverdale you, was pretty cool. Did you guys know you were going to get out like before you did, or did you guys consider uh, staying in? No, I don't, think, I don't think I ever really considered it. Um, yeah, I went in maybe wanting to do it, but I was kind of like, eh, no, I'm good. Yeah. No thanks. I considered it, but I put in for backpack sea duty. And I didn't get it because they never actually put the request through. So I got fucked. And then they slammed it with, like, fucking, where was it? Virginia? I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I was like, if I'm not going overseas or, like, Hawaii or something, I'm not fucking staying in. I want to go to Nebraska. It's crazy that, like, guys who go to PRP in Washington, like we did, or Georgia or whatever, you can do that for four years. And then go to like Norfolk, Virginia, or something stupid. And you could be in the Navy for almost ten years and never go like outside of the states. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> like I hate when I talk to people. They're like, "Oh, you're in the Navy. You must have seen so much shit. Like, how was it?" It's like almost embarrassing to tell them that I'm like, I, <laughs> really, I was in Washington the entire time. Like, uh, I went to Washington with some trees and shit, and I came back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I never even really bring it up. I mean, most people I hang out with don't even know I was in the military. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, if they if they like if the conversation comes up like, oh, you're in the navy. Like if I say something about military, I'll be like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't really want to. It it's, it's, it's like, oh, what, what did you do? Like, oh, so you did fucking nothing? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I slept a lot. Watch the fans. I try to I try to find somewhere to hide and sleep and not get caught. Yeah. That was the most dangerous thing I've ever done. We were literally more <laughs> worried about getting caught sleeping than, like, a terrorist attacking a nuclear weapons facility. <laughs> yeah. It only ever really came up when I was, like, new on the railroad and people would, who didn't know me would ask, like, oh, what'd you do before this? And that was pretty much it. But, you still have a train conductor? Mm-hmm. Driving trains? No, I don't drive them. Uh, how many people have you ran over? Uh, none yet. I came close a few oh. times. Really? Mm-hmm. That amazes me how there's actually like a big statistic of how many people die every year by getting hit by trains. Mm-hmm. Like not in a car, not in a car like park where they're not supposed to park, like walking. Yeah. How did that happen? It's the loudest thing in the world. I live two miles. Fucking tracks. <laughs> I, I live two miles from a railroad track and I can hear it. Like, what is this stand there? by me? We just fucking walk around <laughs> the railroad tracks everywhere we go. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be surprised, dude. There's so many people out there, like, uh, and in the middle of nowhere too, like. I was coming up from Vancouver, uh, Washington, basically Portland, up to Seattle on a grain train. And we're, like, in the middle of nowhere where there's, like, no roads, no nothing. There's, like, maybe, like, Farmer Joe's house he built in 1901, like, off to the side somewhere. But this random-ass guy was literally just walking down the middle of our track, and we're going, like, 50 miles an hour. And he's not moving at all. I'm like, oh, well, here it is. This is the first suicide. I put it into emergency. And it came so close that, like, when I'm sitting up in the cab, I couldn't see him anymore. Like, the last thing I saw was him in the middle of the tracks, and he literally just walked off to the side right before we hit him. But hey. That's fucking wild. That what are you doing? Quite a, I don't know. It's just some transient out there. Fucking. <laughs> he was probably, he probably pussy. He was probably trying to commit suicide. <laughs> just just, some, <laughs> just <laughs> some transient out here trying to get hit by transit. There is... There was one guy in Seattle probably like six months ago, and he, uh, it was the craziest thing. I didn't see it, but I had gotten to work 
right after it happened. And it was, you know, remember the waterfront in Seattle, like where the ferries came in and shit? Like our train goes through the tunnel and then up the waterfront. He literally just came out on the track, laid his head down on the track and let the train cut his head off. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Lots of crazy. Damn. It's funny that you're smiling when you say that. <laughs> you're like, hey, he, just, he let us cut his head off, dude. It's like crazy. <laughs> it's the, the biggest smile, too. It wasn't even like a smirk. Well, <laughs> they were pulling into a non-main track, so they were only going like three miles an hour, too. So he put his head under the train when it was going okay. three miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the worst funny, path. but we're laughing. <laughs> That's probably not the worst death, dude. I'd rather fucking get my head cut off than drown or some shit. Yeah, that'd be pretty quick. That's a slow. But yeah, but it's not like it was... <laughs> Still, three miles an hour. The second it, like, crushes his first jugular, <laughs> it's fucking over, pretty much. Yeah. But, uh... It's weird, because, like, some guys, they'll... Like, some guys have hit, like, three people. And there's a few, mm-hmm. there's a few people who have, like, less seniority than me. I have almost six and a half years now. There's people who have like two years and they've hit like three people. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It's like the number of people who die here by trains. This is stupid. Like, what? It's like, like or something. You hit somebody. What do they do? It's crazy. When my mom was young, she told me when she was a teenager, she had one of her friends die by getting hit by a train. Like, a group of four of them were by the train tracks. And, like, they were playing, like, not on it, but, like, next to it. And then he got hit somehow by it. Yeah. So like, I was like, how the fuck does that happen? Well, you just weren't paying attention. What do you mean you weren't paying attention? A giant freight train coming down. You'd be surprised, like certain track, like the pieces of track are welded together, and so it's pretty much just one continuous piece of track. And if they're not in like a high gear or something, like, and it's like the engine's making a lot of noise, they can get really quiet. So like in the yard, if somebody like lifts a car and like lets it roll down a track or something. Sometimes you can't even hear it walking around out there, especially if you got earplugs or earbuds in or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. It's not surprising. There's a guy, uh, one of the Canadian lines who just died. He was like, it's called a shoving move, so you get on the end of a train, and you could ride it or walk it. And so he tells the engineer how many cars he's good for, and they shove. And so he told them to come to a stop. And they stopped, and they couldn't get a hold of this guy. So they're looking everywhere for him. They went to the yard office to look for him and shit. And then somebody right. went out to where he had stopped the train, and he's laying there under the fucking train, dead. Like underneath the train? Yeah. So they thought uh, like, because when the knuckles go together, it's not like real stiff. Like there's a lot of slack, and so you can imagine like a hundred car train when it like rolls out. Like if he stops real hard, it's like do 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 do, and so he probably got whipped off the end. And then onto the track, and it rolled over him. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> Fuck. Have you um, have you seen like train movies? And you're like, oh, that would never happen. Uh, now, like that one with Denzel, the unstoppable. Uh, the unstoppable. I haven't watched it since I was like 14, but I want to watch. I watched it when it came out. That's it. Yeah. You should watch it again and be like, oh, that would never happen. Yeah. All I I remember in the movie, he was like Denzel was saying, the only way to stop this train is we gotta like tie onto the end of it and gun it the other way <laughs> yeah that wouldn't work at all yeah. <laughs> it's actually impossible <laughs> yeah. it's funny because they they do that knowing that there's like no fucking factual information behind it but they're just like well like 90 percent of the world doesn't fucking know so yeah, <laughs> we exactly. could just do it anyway <laughs> like a- yeah well, uh i was gonna bring it up yeah it's like the movie battleship uh with taylor kitch yeah and uh where he like drifts the carrier or it was a destroyer. Yeah. He drifts the destroyer. It's like, and he throws down anchors, and you see it just go shh. It's like just <laughs> like that, like Tokyo Drift. Like, that's like, what? Impossible. <laughs> Never happened. Didn't they get like a bunch of old World War Two vets to like command the ships and shit in that movie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're back at it, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And they're like, they haven't like operated anything in like eighty years, yeah. and then they're they're better than the people who do it every single day of their life. <laughs> And they're dealing with new technology that they never, never trained on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. I like it when people point out <clears throat> stuff that can never happen. But there's like a channel on uh, YouTube you can watch. I see it on Facebook all the time. 
Well, they'll have, like, an expert. Like, this guy's an expert in submarines. And they'll have all these submarine movies. And, like, they'll kind of watch some scenes and, like, rate it out, like, a, a number out of ten on realism. Like, yeah, that's a one out of ten. That would never happen. Like, one of them, like, freaking uh, uh, water was leaking through this little tiny hole and was, like, squirting into the, into the submarine. And the guy went up and put his finger in there and, like, quick, get something like that. And he stopped it and he's like, that, that. <laughs> That, that doesn't work like that. pressure would be so <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, I've seen that before. Because I had, like, some, like, CIA operative be like, no, he like, go in and, like, watch all these fucking movies of CIA. Mm-hmm. The, the funniest one is one where there's, like, a, uh, uh, like, an Irish mobster or whatever. And they watch all these mob movies, like, yeah, you see that? They're going to happen because if somebody comes up and starts explaining to somebody else, like, mobs kind of stuff, and, like, the ins and outs of the family, they would immediately get killed. It's like, you're doing that right now. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, I don't I don't think I really trust any, like, ex-CIA people for what they say at all. Like, Joe Rogan's had a CIA guy on a few times. And it just sounds like... He sounds like he's a CIA agent and just kind of talking bullshit. But, yeah, I don't... <laughs> I don't even watch those ones. The only, so person, get you shit. <laughs> the only person I want to hear talk about CIA and secret government stuff is Alex Jones. Because that actually makes me laugh. This kind of shit that he says. George Soros let these interdimensional frogs in here that are turning people gay, and nobody knows about it. <laughs> what? <laughs> so funny. I really, I get triggered when Joe Rogan is like, listen, Alex Jones, he says some crazy shit, but he's right about a lot of stuff. And he's like, there's like that, you know how like all those politicians go to that fucking creepy like forest orgy where they like yeah. worship the owl god? That's like literally and the only... And do fake sacrifices and shit? Yeah, that's like the only thing he's ever broke before. You have uh, someone watching saying that I can't hear you, Cardenas. Oh, still? What's that about? Well, yeah, what's that about? Hmm. I figured it'd be fixed by now. What's that about? Who said that? Peter. Peter Backslash. His picture looks like, uh... When did you say it? Is it a while ago? Or... I should have fixed it. Uh, just a minute ago. His picture looks like, uh... I hope that they couldn't hear anything the entire time. He, he's, he's, putting in, he, he's putting in caps. It. Uh, it makes me feel like he's... Just a minute thing. ago. Maybe? His he's picture like, please, looks... I can't hear him, please. No, he must, I, he I, must I, really I, want to know what you're talking about. Maybe he's just really desperate to hear the words that come out of his mouth. I mean, I am too. That's why I tune in. I just uh, listened. I should. So I Peter's hear, lying. I can hear myself now. I think that was. So, so we have a lying ass Peter on our hands. Is that what's happening? I'm going to hit him back. Oh, looks like. Uh, I hope that they couldn't hear anything the entire time. He's, he's, he's putting in. He, no, I just listened. They, I can hear. I'm kind of quiet. I should figure that out. But, uh. <clears throat> Audio here. I might just need to talk closer to it. There's settings on the back. Where are you guys even seeing this? Um, In the live stream. Where where did you send the link to the live stream at? Just to my admin chat. I didn't send it to everyone. I just wanted to get a viewers. That guy's probably gone by now. Is he a douchebag, Peter? <laughs> um, where's the admin chat at? probably can't see it it's under administration it's locked it's a locked channel i could give you guys perms to view it though let me give you a roll to view it i'll give you a yeah i gave you napd admins role so you should be able to see the admin chat We should probably figure out what this whole podcast is going to be about. Oh, yeah. Good, yeah. Can't be about our life in the military. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Only us <laughs> and like 10 other people. Yeah. <laughs> Mutus, how old are you now? 26. No, fucking old. Old as shit. 
Yeah, so the almost dead. I don't remember my password for Discord. Why do you need your password? You're literally in Discord right now. Because uh, it's telling me um, this server requires members with moder uh, moderation powers to have two-factor authentication. And I need to enable it. And I need to put in my password to enable it. So how do you guys feel about Biden being the president now? Um, are we going into this, huh? Okay. I mean, it's inauguration day. I mean, ultimately, what he does isn't really going to affect me. I'm not a business owner. I'm just some fucking asshole living in California. So really, it's whatever. Um, but uh, my problem, my problem isn't that like I don't like him and stuff like that. Uh, it's the problem is that everyone's treating him like some sort of hero when, yeah. and that he's so amazing, he's done everything, and he's so awesome. But yeah, he just lived in the basement all summer. Like the the country was burning down, cities were burning, and all this shit, stuff happening. And he would just go radio silent for three months, come back up and says Trump's an evil man, and then go back down and hide. It's like and people say, oh, he ran a great campaign. N no, the media ran a great campaign for him, and also Trump ran a great campaign for him. Trump, Those are sure. Trump literally Trump, ran Biden's campaign. Yeah, and it might be was, the most like MVP. standard nomination. Like he's like, like there's nothing special. Like if it wasn't for Obama, it wouldn't 100%. be. A thing. Oh yeah. Uh, and all the other candidates were not you know good. Like Tulsi Gabbard is too moderate, and then um, Bernie Sanders is too radical. So Joe Biden's right there in between, and they're like, well, we'll choose him. It was really just like paved for him. It was like the easiest <laughs> walk of all yeah. time. And then people are in people are in Harris, Harris, uh, uh, makes yeah, me feel like he's just so amazing. Maybe he's, 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 he's not kind of hating on places. She's so amazing, and she got here all in her own. And all of a it's like, well, the only reason why she was chosen is because she's a woman and she's a person of color. And that's not me saying that. That's Joe Biden saying that. He literally said that. He's like, this is the re I'm choosing my VP solely uh, for being a woman and a person of color. And that happens to only be uh, Kamala Harris. Well, that's, yeah, that's just identity politics, which yeah. the unfortunate part on the Democrat side, like the people, like the liberals, all they care, that's about, all they care about are optics. Like none of them care about yeah. like what laws they're going to pass or how they're going to help them. And, and, that's, and that's the opposite for Republicans. All they want is the people who think the same as that shit yeah. that's been going on for 70, 80 years. And, and you they don't have to agree with every single thing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's like, no, you can dis you don't have to agree with everything. You disagree. That's why I like Dan Crenshaw, obviously, because he's Navy, but also because he actually, I, I follow him on Instagram. Most of the, uh, half the stuff he puts out is this is something bad that Trump did. I don't agree with this. Or this is something majority of Republicans do, and I don't agree with this. And then he actually reaches out and he tries to, he works with the other side. And I like that. You know, and there are some Democrats who do that too, but. Unfortunately, most of them wouldn't even sit in the same room with a Republican because they would be viewed as evil by doing so. And so it's created so much division. Like, nobody can come together because if you meet with the other side, then you're an evil person for doing so. Yeah, I could see that somewhat. Um, yeah. Like, I, I talked to my dad recently. <clears throat> it's the last time I'll probably talk to him in a while. But he, yeah. he said, uh, I, I'm like, what do you think the division is? He's like, well, it's because the left is basically saying you have to cooperate with what we're thinking and nothing else. And, but like when you think that way, you literally, you're not looking at the other side as well. Or like these politicians have like purposefully done this to try to get votes. And people eat the shit up on either side, you know, like saying, oh, Biden choosing a person of color, he's the best, most progressive president in history. And so, Well, it's just bent narratives on both sides. Yeah. No matter what you say, they'll bend it to whatever works exactly for their agenda. <clears throat> exactly. You can be like, you can come out with a thing, uh, a bill, like, oh, here's a bill for all 
give a bunch of money to uh, businesses to not have them close down. You'd be like, oh, on one side would be like, oh wow, he saved all those businesses from closing down. The other side is like, oh wow, now our taxes is going up, and now I can't uh, afford to pay my car bill because my taxes are raised. And then there'll, there'll be two different narratives, and both sides will push the one that favors them. And then the opposite sides of the aisle will be like, oh, well, you guys are evil because uh, my neighbor actually, you know, can't make his car payment because he's paying too much in taxes. And it's like, well, my, my neighbor had his business saved, so you're evil. It just stuff like that is just nonsense. Well, there's like, no it, compromise like at all. There's none. But, but what we're seeing from the left though is that they are they they openly openly uh, say that uh, these are like they have a list of demands that they want to be met, and there's no compromise. There's no like they don't they have not reached over across the aisle to work with Republicans on anything. They're like it needs to be our way or the highway, and it can't be your way because you guys are all evil, racist, pigheads, just like Trump. <laughs> and it's you know so be it. And that's just that, that's that's what they're doing. And then, uh, from my point of view, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot more of the unwillingly unwilling um, to cooperate with the other side coming mostly from the left, but also. You have a lot of incompetent Republicans who do not want to move into a progressive uh, state. So they uh, just sit around just thinking the same old stuff that obviously isn't working, but they're like, well, it's not working, but at least it's better than that. That's what I don't understand, dude. I don't get how people think it's a good idea to have a two-party system at all. I don't understand why there's even the party systems in general. I feel like everyone should have to run independent. I feel like you should have your own ideals and people will base off of that, not based off of you fronting for everyone else's ideals. Just money. Well, yeah. It's, it's just dumb. <laughs> it is literally money. Like When you have politicians on either side on day one starting fundraising for the next campaign, six years yeah, down ridiculous. the road or two years, whatever it is, like that's absurd. There was a guy on Joe Rogan who talked about this a little bit, and he said he thinks like... <laughs> All money should be out of politics, like corporations or whatever. Everybody gets a twenty-five dollar uh, credit on their tax return a year, and you can give it to whatever politician you want to give it to, and that's it. But then they have to li- then they have to go to the people, you know. So. But then the banks and shit wouldn't get to everything they want, you know. <laughs> yeah. They don't get to buy their candidates. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it just, it, it's so hard to, like, um, you can't trust anyone. And the people who say, like, I've seen people, like, all day posting, um, just posting, like, oh, thank God, like, I almost cried when I watched the inauguration. I feel like, I feel like we're all saved. It's like, give me a break. I mean, come on. You really feel that way? Like, <laughs> like literally, this woman, I don't know who she is, uh, she posts, like, tears on her face because she's so happy that Trump's out of office. Yeah, so, okay, well, what has he done that's affected you? Uh, other than your life has been so marginally changed that it's, it's so ridiculous. That's why everyone's up in arms for nothing. It's like he's a like they see him as a saint. It's like he's just a he's just a dude who's just campaigning for all the people who gave him all this money, you know. And every single politician, once you step in the office, you become a millionaire. One, you know, well, yeah. you can get in. You can get in. Making what one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year? And that's all you're worth. In a couple of years, all of a sudden you're making millions. Like how? Oh, I wrote a book. Yeah, I wrote mm. a book. I, Gold, sure. Goldman Sachs. Or speeches. Paid, yeah, Goldman Sachs. Like a million dollars per fucking speech. <clears throat> yeah. Like Obama. I mean, anyone well, like five hundred grand just to go speak for an hour to their. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like you know, Bernie Sanders. Is, he, he talks about the tax the one percent people with all this money. Um, you know. They're stealing from you. You know, if they weren't taking up all this money and it's evil, we wouldn't have any poor people. Meanwhile, he's like, I, I feel like I'm gonna go to my house number three today. I mean, <laughs> it's in Montana, oh, two point five million dollar property. I think that I'll just see right now. I think that house argument's pretty tired though, because like one yeah. of them is like a shitty townhome in Washington D.C., which they all have townhomes. He has a main house, and then he has like a tiny little cabin. So he's not. Like, you tell me where it is. So it's a lot of acres this weekend. <laughs> yeah, well, the the cabin one was like inherited through his family. 
Mm-hmm. So it's not like he went out and bought it with his own dough. Basically saying, you're a little bitch, McDaniel, and you're wrong. Yeah. Okay. I don't okay. think so. That's what we're getting at. No, thanks, my friend. But. Oh. There, the problem is, is that government has never been good at, like, regulations. Like, saying, okay, we need, like, to break up corporations <clears throat> or we need to tax them more. Like, where's the tax money going to? It's just going to the Pentagon any new tax money and then they give all these deductions to people who are rich anyway so they still don't pay taxes whether they increase the tax rate or not but the other issue is like you can't count on corporations to do the right thing and give people a fair wage because they don't Mm -hmm. so who's going to fix the issue because the government's probably just going to fuck it up yeah yeah i can't trust the government for anything um that's why I lean more towards libertarian every fucking day. Yeah, um, yeah I know. That's just how it is. Because <clears throat> the way I see it, libertarians, they want no government. Basically, they want a wild, wild west. That's their fucking, that's their, uh, that's their happy dream they want. You know, Republicans, they want states <clears throat> to rule themselves. They want small government to regulate a few things, but mostly states run themselves. Democrats, no, we just want the government to run everything, all states combined. Everything's federal, all one unison. And I don't like that. I like the states thing, but also can't rely on the states to do the right thing. Hence, California is shitty. So that's why I lean a little bit more towards libertarian. I'm not libertarian, but yeah. I feel like I'm getting there. Yeah, I like the idea of a smaller government, but I think there's certain things that should be included as a citizen. You need regulations. On certain things, yeah, like can't do of completely wild, wild west. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like what was that East Indian Trading Company or whatever? Like they literally told England, oh, Caribbean. Yeah, they, <laughs> well, they became so rich and powerful because there was like no regulations back then that they basically told England, they're like, we're not paying taxes, and if you try to make us pay taxes, we're literally going <laughs> to defeat your army with our army because we're <laughs> way more money than you. Yeah. So I mean, I. What would happen if Amazon or, I mean, these places are already super powerful, but if you just gave them, like, total free reign to do whatever they want, it'd be pretty fucked up. Yeah. Oh, if you don't think good. Jeff Bezos is going to be running the world in a couple of years, you're fucking high, all right? <laughs> uh, uh, Disney <laughs> owns freaking Amazon, don't, don't they? What? what or no. Oh, no, it's not. No, they don't. I thought Disney owned Amazon. No. Uh, no. <clears throat> Amazon. Disney is why there needs to be regulations. <laughs> like, go, the government can, step, the government can really step in and go, no, no, you can't buy, uh, you can't buy Universal Studios. We're not going to let that happen. They like they can legally do that. And Disney would be like, ah, oh, shucks. Even if Universal wanted to, like, yeah, sure, buy us off for five billion. The government would be like, no, no, can't do that, and they can't do it. Um, that was a big thing with that, that's what held up the Fox uh, them buying Fox for a long time. Like if the, if the government didn't have a hand in it, they would have bought it like ten years ago. But I had to wait this long so the government can get their money so they can suck on that tea. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, I gotta wrap it up because I gotta get to work here in a few hours. But okay. Jesus, I'm gonna go take a little nap. Take Sounds a good, bro. Nap. Little nappy poos. Yeah, I got the the Midnight Express mm. on the BNSF Railroad. On the on the Jack Black D train. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. I like that movie. It's a good movie. Mm-hmm. Unreal. Yeah. I'm not I'm not working tomorrow. I have a, a doctor's appointment at eight a.m. So I'll be up pretty late. Nice. Yeah. What are you going to the doctor for? Uh, I've been having an issue with my throat. <clears throat> I've been uh, like um, spinning up blood all day. So. Oh, nice. So you got COVID like, finally. For the past two months, I don't know what it is. You have fucking tuberculosis? Freaking hopefully. <laughs> is it a lot or are you just like coughing? No, it's not coming from deep down. It's just it's coming up from like in my mouth because I'll just wake up in the morning and like I'll feel, I'll taste like a little metallic or whatever, and I'll spit and I'll spit blood, like right when I wake up. There's no like, I'm not throwing up, I'm not coughing up blood. It's 
I'm bleeding from somewhere in my head, you know, my mouth, really, either my throat, my nose, whatever. I don't know what it is, but uh, I went to the dentist. It's not my teeth or anything. So I'm thinking, because I've been having a lot of, like, um, uh, nose issues, like a lot of, um, like, blockage, you know, in phlegm. So maybe it could be, like, a infection up there or uh, an infection in the throat, too. Because, like, blood will get, like, stuck in my throat, and then I'll, it's, like, builds up, and I can start gagging, you know, because it's, like, in there. And I'll have to spit, and there's a bunch of blood. So. Been waiting two months to see this doctor. I told him, I was like, I'm getting lightheaded and passing out sometimes, so maybe I can get in earlier. They're like, no, the soonest is January 21st. I was like, okay. Oh, <laughs> That's like early December. I'm going to bleed out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, okay, well, I told them this too. I was like, okay, well, hopefully I survive till then. And she's like, okay, have a good day, and hung up. <laughs> you fucking <dude. laughs> It's the VA. It's the VA? <clears throat> yeah. Well, that makes sense then. How do you get VA yeah. care? Everyone does. You have to sign up for it. You're telling me I could sign up for VA care? I didn't get a percentage when I got out. You don't have to. Oh. Um, when you get a percentage, the level of uh, care goes up. Like, I'm at zero because uh, I didn't file for anything. Um, but, like, if you get oh, at God. least if you get at least 30%, um, then you get dental included. Um, but other than that, it's just basic. Like, I went to the ER one time, didn't have to pay anything. Um I had a couple of doctor's appointments, didn't have to pay anything. So the only thing, I did have to pay for dental, though, kind of shitty. But, yeah, you can get it. Your trained people don't give you health care? No, I get great health care with the NSF uh, for me in April. But when I got furloughed for like a year back in like 2015, uh, 16, I didn't have health insurance at all. Oh, yeah. Well, you if you're have... furloughed, you'd get it anyway because there's a certain uh... – percentage that you have to make to where you're not eligible but if you're not making anything because of furlough you would get it anyway you just have to apply for the VA and you'd get it to a higher extent probably than McDaniels yeah because the VA has a percentage if you're under a certain amount you get free healthcare oh okay Hmm. yeah that Mm -hmm. was a while I'm not in danger of being furloughed now that was at the beginning of my career but yeah Uh, okay yeah that's not the best I like I called my doctor that I went there I was like hey uh, my primary care and I said hey um like, I'm spitting up blood, and I have a lot of, like, mucus and stuff. He's like, oh, it's probably allergies. I was like, I'm spitting up blood? He's like, yeah, it's <laughs> probably the ER. cancer inside my body? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was, so he's like, go to the ER. And it took me a month to get that appointment. Go to the ER. They're like, oh, okay. I was there for four hours. Fucking didn't do jack shit. And they're like, looked in my mouth. Oh, okay. Yeah, you should go see an ENT, an ear, nose, and throat doctor. I was like, well, how the fuck was I here for four hours? There's nobody in there. I was the only one in there. And uh, and I called him, like, yeah, January 21st. Damn. Okay. Guess I'm waiting until then. Fucking blow my brains out every single day since. So I wake up, like, ten times a night. It sucks. <clears throat> suck. Have you tried a honey pot? No, what's that? It's like those little... I think it's like a little humidifier, but you can, like, put your face over it or oh. something. Or, like... There's like one where you could like put it in your nose and it clears out your sinuses. Like yeah, I don't know. I mean, nothing hurts. Sometimes when I get like, if I get like really bad like acid reflux, it comes up in my throat. You know, like the heat, it like burns my throat. It feels like, I don't know. I feel like my throat's bag is kind of like little, little raw and irritated, but it doesn't hurt all day. It's just I can feel if I start gagging really hard, then I kind of feel like ah, it kind of hurts. We'll see. I'll keep you guys posted. Yeah, hopefully you don't die. Yeah, hopefully. Before 30. Come on. That'll be a, that can be a topic for next uh, uh, podcast is when, is when I'm going to die. Died. Yeah, is when I'm going to die. Me and Cardenas will try to figure it out. All right. Like, I right, guess. Your house on it and try to find how, it. how many years do they give me? Start guessing. Damn. Trick question. How many months? Hey, who's this Peter guy? He keeps sending me some bullshit. I'm going to ban him. Peter, you're getting banned, kid. Dude, he's freaking Bot City. All right. Well, I got to bounce, but I love you guys. I'll see you uh, yeah. next week. See ya. Later. Bye-bye.